Hi YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be channel and another Fusion Flicker. Just a short video, we're going to talk through a couple different things in Fusion to try to help you out. I don't claim to be a Fusion expert, but had a question and happy to share my learning as I am going through the process like many of you may be as well. If you're new to the channel, usually my videos are on machining, welding, knife making, everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop. A lot of that machining requires using Fusion 360, so that's what we're going to talk about today. For those of you returning to the channel, I sure appreciate appreciate you watching the videos. If you are new, if you like what you see, great time, hit that subscribe button, drop a like in here, a comment on the video, I'd sure appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this Fusion Flicker. Today we're going to talk through a couple of things. We're going to talk through setting one origin point and then machining multiple pieces from that same origin point. I had somebody on my channel ask about that, so Twin Peaks, thanks for the question. Hopefully this will address that for you. I also want to spend a little bit of time on this video talking about using multiple work offsets. So trying to gain some of that machining efficiency. If you're making multiples of the same part, you can maybe do that in two different vices. So if you had another vice set up side by side on your machine, you'll be able to do multiple work offsets to do that. And also if you don't have multiple vices, but maybe you want to get into a pallet system, something like a Pearson work holding system where you're making your own pallets, then talking about how to use patterning so that you make your part and you can duplicate that pattern across the piece. Also duplicate the cam for that pattern across your piece. We're going to get into that as well. Let's jump into and talk about this setting up one origin on your machine. Again, this would work well for a pallet system. I know for Pearson work holding, they recommend you set up one point, one origin. So we're going to pick this origin for this one. It's going to be, you know, what would be the equivalent of the edge of your vise. So it's going to be the, this has got a soft jaw in here, but I guess so in this case it would be the edge of that soft jaw. You could go back here and do it as the edge of your vise. So we're setting Z here on the vise. And then some fixed point that's on your vise is what you're going to want to pick for that. So I've got that same origin point for setup one and for setup two. Setup one is a different Z height. That's machining the top of this block and putting a couple of holes in it. And setup two is machining these little cover plates in the top of this other jig that we have set up on here. So let's take a quick look at the simulation and how this is going to go through and cut these different pieces, even though we've got the same origin set up. I'm going to go ahead and leave both of them on just so you can see the difference in Z height as we look at the simulation. So we're going to go through and cut this first part. And you can see that it's cutting across at the top. It went off the top of this piece. No problem. We're going to look at setup number two and simulate that. Again, I know I'm going to leave the other piece on. It's kind of hidden there. And you can see that it's punching those holes and it's going through and doing the operation based on our second piece that's in there. So all of that, we set up one fixed, we probed one time, and you'd be able to take pieces in and out of your vise if you had a vise stop or something else set up. And my recommendation, if you're going to do this, visually, I need to be able to see it, which means you're going to need to import the vise into your Fusion design, know what size parallel you have set up on, know what these other fixed measurements are, set up your stock height measurements. This would allow you to probe once and go through and set up multiple operations. Or in the case of a pallet system, you can have one probe or one, maybe a pin that you line things up on and you could put different pallets in and out of your machine all with one probe set up. And as long as you've set up all your cam operations off of that fixed point, you can go through and do a whole bunch of different operations all without having to probe again. Save some time, hopefully build some efficiency in there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to work offsets using multiple work offsets for two different vices. All right, so to get into multiple work offsets, let's turn this around and let's turn off that other piece of stock and let's focus in on this. So we're going to talk about two different ways to increase my machining efficiency on these little cover plates. The first way is using multiple work offsets, two vices, and the next way we're going to talk about is actually patterning this across a pallet to do it that way. So for multiple work offsets, right now we already showed you where I had that set up. So in my case, that would be my G54 work offset. On the machine, I would make sure that that was programmed and probed at G54. 
Then if I had another vice in the machine, I would need to set my machine to G50. In my case, G56, because I have G55 set up where my tool setter goes on the back of this fixed jaw, so I don't want to mess up G55. So I would go ahead and I would tell my machine I'm on G56, and I would probe into another location. And again, as long as I probe what I tell it I'm going to do, I could probe the top of the jaw up here, use Z is this one on over here. Whatever the case is, as long as whatever I'm probing matches up with what I have configured here in Fusion. To keep it simple, we're going to go G54 in that spot, and we're going to go G56 over here in this spot as we're thinking about what we're going to go through here and do. You don't even have to show the other vice in here because it's not actually going to simulate and show us cutting in two different places. I'm just going to show you that in the G code in here in a moment because it won't actually model that for you. So when you're doing multiple work offsets, anything like that, you really need to keep it straight in your head. The machine is going to do exactly what you tell it to do, but in the case of multiple work offsets, it doesn't model it for you. Where we're going to see that is when we go in here to edit this setup. So we've got our origin point set. We've got our stock, everything, all that's going to look the same. We're going to go to this post process tab, and this is where you have the option to select multiple work offsets. So by default, you probably have that off. One thing to keep in mind is that when you want to use multiple work offsets, you need to get away from the default zero that it gives you here in Fusion, and you need to set that to one. One translates to G54 for your work offset. If you leave that set to zero, then you're going to run into a problem when you do multiple. We've got, this is G54, that equals one. I want to do multiple work offsets. Number of instances, in our case, is going to be two. This would be for two vices. If you had a third vice, you would set that to three. Work offset increment, I have this set to two, again, because I want to go from G54 all the way to G56. I don't want to use G55. That's why I have it as an increment of two. If I had a third vice, then it would go to G58. So again, you just have to mentally keep track of what you have it set up for. And that's it. All you're doing is turning this on, and that's automatically going to have it duplicate your part in two different places. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, we already watched the simulation on this, but we'll just look at it really quickly here now that we don't have the other block on. So same thing. You can see that this goes through and it simulates it's doing everything one time at my G54 work offset. But let's take a look at the code and see where the other offsets come into play. So I want to post process. I've got this set up for Tormach. All right. I want to post. We're going to save that. It's going to replace. I've already posted it once. And I want to view my code now. So now when we go in here and take a look at the code, you can see that I've got a G54 operation, and it's going to go through and drill all of those holes. Then it's going to go to G56, and it's going to drill all of those same holes off of the same position. Then it's going to go back to G54, back to G56 for the second drilling operation, back to G54, G56, and it's going to continue to go back and forth and do all of those same machining operations at both of those positions. We didn't really have to do anything different to our cam other than tell it we want it to, to use multiple work offsets. One thing I forgot to mention here in our setup, though, is you set up your multiple work offsets and you do have a choice we want to order by tool. That way, when you've selected your tool, it's going to do everything with the tool on work offset G54, and then it's going to go do everything with that same tool on work offset G56. That's where you're gaining your efficiency is by minimizing the number of tool changes, saving some wear and tear on your machine. So for this, we want to make sure we've got it set to order by tool, and that's going to match up with the G code that we just looked at. So that's it. It is that easy to do multiple work offsets and to go through there and cut this plate on two different vices. So visually, we can see that over here, but we don't have to duplicate the plate. We're not actually putting it over here. We're not seeing it in our simulation, but in the G code, you can see that it was going to cut that exact same part over here in the other vice as long as we had it loaded. All right, last thing we're going to take a look at is patterns, and we're going to go see another way to increase our efficiency on these cover plates, but we're going to use patterns instead of using multiple work offsets. Let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at those same cover plates here and talk about 
making our pattern instead of multiple work offsets. So first, let me get back to the design side of this picture, get us a little better look here. So right now, in order to get a pattern, I've happened to put these right in the middle, so they're not in a very good place for me to pattern those out. And let me turn off I can turn them both off at once. All right, let's first talk about my jig plate. So for me, visually, I wanna be able to see exactly what I'm making. So I wanna move my pattern around on here. I'm gonna show you over in the cam side later that you don't actually have to do it. The way that I have this designed, I could just duplicate this pattern and mentally keep track of the size of my jig plate. To me, that's just asking for trouble. I mean, I think I wanna visually see what I'm doing. This machine's already complex enough that if I'm trying to just let it machine off in, in space in my cam side of it, that just adds to the confusion to me. I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. For me, we're gonna go ahead and visually see this pattern. So I wanna select all of this. So first, I just need to move this around. All right, we're gonna move that one right there. And I'm gonna move this one while we're at it. All right, so now that I've moved my individual pieces up here, I wanna go ahead and now duplicate this so that I can have this pattern come down. So same thing, I wanna come over here and I wanna grab all of that. Now I need to be careful, I wanna make sure I don't grab this top edge when I'm doing that. So I grab all of those faces and I wanna create a rectangular pattern. So I've got all of those faces selected. I only want this to be one time going across the X axis. I want two going this way. I wanna select my direction and I wanna bring this down. And we're gonna come down 0.9 inches and I'm gonna hit okay. So now on my jig plate, I have enough to just doubled, just doubled my production on these. Obviously, if I made a larger jig plate, I could make even more of those, but we're just talking through how to pattern that. Now let me turn the, the covers back on. You can see I had those locked in place with some joints earlier. So I need to go ahead and delete those joints really quickly so that we can lock those back in place in the right place. There we go. So now I wanna put this cover plate back in this hole and I wanna put this cover plate back in here. So to do that, I want to assemble joint, put this cover plate. Back in place and hit okay. Assemble another joint. Get my other cover plate back in place over here. There we go. So now that we have that done, I wanna go do the same thing. So if I wanna take this cover plate right here, I can click on that. I can go rectangular pattern. In this case, instead of faces, I want that whole body. So I wanna pattern that whole body. Same thing, I wanna just go straight across, down. I wanna select my direction. Where how did my body, there we go. Lost track of my body there somewhere. Come down 0.9, and we've got that in there. For this other cover plate, same thing. I wanna go create another rectangular pattern. For this one, I wanna do that as a component since it's got my engraving and everything on there. We want two coming down this way. Direction, bring that down 0.9, and there we go. So now we've patterned our design and we have that on there. Let's go take a look at what that's gonna do to us from a manufacturing standpoint. So first we need to regenerate our tool paths on here. And we can take a look at what we have for our original tool paths. So if I turn off those other bodies again, So first we'd wanna go through and you can see that for the cam on making the jig, I only have it set up for those top two plates. That's what I had programmed in there from before. To duplicate that, we're just gonna pattern it down here as well. So I'm gonna select all of that cam. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna add new pattern. And what I found worked was a linear pattern from a direction. I wanna move that down on my Y axis. Number of instances two, distance is 0.9. And I hit okay. And now I've 
going to cut that in two different places on my plate. So once we've cut the jig plate, then we're obviously we need to cut our pieces. So let me turn those back on. We go down here to our setup number two and same thing. You can see that that's only set up on one set. We're going to highlight all those, right click on this, add new pattern, keep that as linear, the direction. I want to move on that Y axis again, 0.9, hit OK. And visually, I can see exactly what's going to happen. Now, if we watch that simulation on that, we're going to see that we're going to go through and we're now making double the number that we were making before, still using one work offset, not using multiple work offsets like we were before, and we still just doubled our production on those. Also, you can see there's my work offset. I have that just in one place here. Go look at our setup and we're just using one work offset. So we just doubled our production time there, increasing the jig. Now, this is where I was saying that you could actually do this without even modeling the design and speed this up even faster if you already have a jig plate or you already have something designed. I could go in here to this pattern, select it as I just did, add new pattern, and instead of two instances, let me get our direction set. I could go five instances, space those out at 0.9. Now, even though I didn't design that, I don't even show that I have material, it would still cut that. And if I now go and simulate and we watch this cut, it's gonna cut the same two we had before and you can see that it's gonna keep on going down and cutting those other five, even though I don't visually see those. For me, this machine is complex and complicated enough. If I don't exactly see what's going on in my design, I think I would lose track of it. So I wouldn't recommend that, but that's the power of what you can do with patterns to speed up your cam machining time and get yourself down there cutting parts faster. So hopefully this was helpful as we talked through using multiple work offsets if you had two vices and we talked through how you could use patterns to get through and pattern your design and also pattern your manufacturing to speed up production. Again, if you like these videos, if you like the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. You'll know when the next video is coming out. Until then, I hope you're out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. I'll be here working on another video for you in the Blades to Be shop. And until I get that one out, y'all take care.